The Baron of Grogswig. The Baron von Kuldwitthout of Grodzwig in Germany was as likely a young baron as you could wish to see. I needn't say that he lived in a castle, because that's of course. Neither need I say that he lived in an old castle, for what German baron ever lived in a new one. There were many strange circumstances connected with this venerable building, among which, not the least startling and mysterious, were that when the wind blew, it rumbled in the chimneys, or even howled among the trees in the neighbouring forest, and that when the moon shone, she found her way through certain small loopholes in the wall, and actually made some parts of the wide halls and galleries quite light, while she left others in gloomy shadow. I believe that one of the baron's ancestors, being short of money, had inserted a dagger in a gentleman who called one night to ask his way, and it was supposed that these miraculous occurrences took place in consequence. And yet I hardly know how that could have been either, because the baron's ancestor, who was an amiable man, felt very sorry afterwards for having been so rash and laying violent hands upon a quantity of stone and timber which belonged to a weaker baron, built a chapel as an apology and so took a receipt from heaven in full of all demands. Talking of the baron's ancestor puts me in mind of the baron's great claims to respect on the score of his pedigree. I'm afraid to say I'm sure how many ancestors the baron had, but I know that he had a great many more than any other man of his time, and I only wish that he had lived in these latter days that he might have done more. It is a very hard thing upon the great men of past centuries that they should have come into the world so soon, because a man who was born three or four hundred years ago cannot reasonably be expected to have had as many relations before him as a man who was born now. The last man, whoever he is, and he may be a cobbler or some low vulgar dog for aught we know, will have a longer pedigree than the greatest nobleman now alive, and I contend that this is not fair.' 